we are combining Full Moon Mirror Mage with Agatha's Soul Cauldron, although this time we're really, really going in on it. Um, the first time we were playing one Fulminator as a Fauna Shaman tutor target, playing more of like the Asmo style or Zashaga Shell. Um, but playing both with and against my opponent's Fulminators, yesterday we were playing Scales and we uh, stole a Fulminator with Cauldron and it was just, it was just so crazy. I, I really want to try being a bit more in on the plan. Um, I think the way to do... And, and then another thing, I was talking to a friend of mine when we were playing D&D yesterday about that the uh, the Tyvar Cauldron deck. And he was like, you know, Agatha's Soul Cauldron is kind of like Tyvar, but better. And, he, and he's, he's, he's definitely exactly right. Obviously, Tyvar has, like, extra utility, filling up the graveyard, untapping stuff. But Cauldron is like... It's, it's a, like a two-mana Tyvar, just, like, gives a thing in play the activated ability that you're buying back. Um... And then it just and then it kind of spirals out of control. It's more resilient than Tyvar too, which makes you think you well, you want to kind of move away from that plan and into maybe this kind of collected company on Earth Shell. Really, really find those Fulminator Mages, blow up those lands, cauldron them, and then you can also control the board with uh, with Grist and Priest of the Forgotten Gods. So you're killing the lands with Fulminators, you're killing the creatures with Priest and Grist, and you're trying to do it really quickly with either mana dorks and like you know one into one into three into four or you're gonna be trying to like get lucky maybe mill over one of these things with your citrus supplier and unearth like turn two grist turn two fulminator mage um so let's go ahead and start jamming i think is there enough plus one counter so yeah i i, I feel like in this build it's like a little bit less necessary to have a lot of stuff that has incidental plus one counters uh, and it's like you really just have like the the bowmaster plus one stuff, but you also like like if you have like a creature in play and you have you go know, a creature cauldron fulminator, then turn that fulminator, you're blowing up two lands, turn three, um, which I think is you know more than enough, and then and then you're blowing up one you know, one extra land every turn. I'm gonna keep this. It's like a little maybe a little loose, but priest plus double blood gas can be pretty pretty good. Hate to mess with the curve, so just take a three drop, but Mayhem Devil maybe. Well, it's like a whole extra color too. Um, we don't and at the moment we don't have like a ton of sacrifice synergies. We have some. Hammer is maybe like the <laughs> the best thing we could have seen here. We have some. I I I, I don't hate the uh, they they hate the suggestion. Priest very good against hammer. See how fast the draw is. It's good for us that we run the play with this hand. Please me, 26, thank, thank you, welcome back. Hope you're doing well today. Okay, tank, tank, tank. Stone Forge Mystic, maybe reading Priest of the Forgotten Gods. They get a Cauldra, and I, I think I'm pretty happy to see my opponent grab Cauldra here. Drew basic forest. Hmm. Pretty sure we're just supposed to play blood gas. There's, there's even like an argument here to hold our land so we can landfall. But I think we're going to be drawing enough cards with the priest triggers that I'm not going to do that. I also think we might want to um, next turn go like top swamp, top forest, cast priest, sack the priest to... The priest ability and then i can um unearth it with the other mana and also play a soul cauldron and then start double activating a turn <laughs> on a scale of coco to aether vial where would i say this deck lies i guess on the coco side of the scale i, I you know i'm someone that you know sometimes plays both of those cards together but i think you know our no other non-creature spells are on earth and cauldron so i don't really have all the room I guess I could also sack this at kind of a later date. Ooh. Yeah, if we hit a land off the priest draw, we get to draw a card. I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and cast it now. Toptic lands, the 28. Hope you're doing well today. Thank you, thank you, and welcome back. Okay, so we did draw our land. So I think I just jam a, com a company here. 
We can cauldron the priest ability next year, don't really need to unearth it. Okay, so we'll take a halfling, fulminator mage, then we can start the coco. Fulminator mage stuff if we want to. I am gonna go ahead and destroy their land. Your turn. What am I supposed to believe? Like three weeks, I think? Missed two damage, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be okay, probably. I'm worried about Coco hits being low. We have 29 creatures in the deck for Coco. I, 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 27 is usually the minimum. 29 feels pretty comfy. What's nice is like, e even just like hitting any creature is good sometimes if you have Cauldron or Priest. Like, you just like want to exact the creatures or have a creature to Cauldron onto. Sometimes you could look at decks, Coco decks with Grist, and you see, oh, 25 creatures. That's not 29, but uh, it's, it is 29. Grist is a Coco hit. Was Carried Feeder considered in this list? I, I'm not, like, super excited about Carried Feeder if I'm not playing Ballista, so I can, like, turn those counters into... Um, turn those counters into damage. Um... I was also liking Carried Feeder more in combination with Grave Crawler. Like, we don't have that many good things to sacrifice here besides the Blood Gas. And we already have, you know, a couple sack outlets for them via Grist and Priest. We can build them over a Supplier. Like, the Blood Gas are already good. Don't really need to do a lot of work to, um... Like, make them better or play another card that's kind of underpowered, I think. Naval Paint with the 12 months, thank you. Hope you're doing well also. Pretty sure it's taking their time here. They got a hammer off their stone forge mystic. They have a um, surge of salvation. Things could go kind of wrong here. They do have a surge of salvation. Bit of bisque with the 16 months, thank you. Hope you're doing well. So, I think there's anything we do about them being able to equip a hammer next turn, except hope that they are unable to do that. I think the best way to do that it might be um, to like Fulminator Mage kill it, Urza Sog response to the trigger so they have one less mana. We dead? Well, we don't know that they can equip a hammer here, but we, we are dead if they have it. So the unearth creature is just good with infinite combos or to consider an unearth creature, it's like such as something to sack and generate plus four counters on Do you mean undying creatures? <laughs> I don't know. You, you get, you, there, d players get very lost in the sauce on mechanics. There's there are no good mechanics. There are only good cards. What well, like what specific undying creature, or tr unearth creature, or undying creature do you want to play? Young wolf. Um, you know, Young Wolf is, you know, a lot better at Ballista. It's just like a different shell. Just the Yawgmoth shell, really. Okay, now we're dead. Man, that stinks. Could be very good if they don't have the Surge. I wonder if we could play around it? Like, they did tank forever. I'm gonna bring in the Forces. I'm gonna bring in the Haywire Might. It's nice to give things. Haywire's my activated ability in this matchup. I'm gonna go down to like one Fulminator probably, probably not too many more than that. Um, Bowmasters are also kind of medium. They, they have like some utility. They also have plus one counters. Um, Priests are like kind of your best card in the matchup. Bloodgas are also pretty bad. Maybe actually we want to be going away from these. And my creature count for Coco here is 24, so whatever two cards I pull out from here, they need to be creatures, probably just two blood ghasts. Maybe I'll play with a second Fulminator. Try this. Could have a Yawgmoth variant that's more in on Cauldron and Sacrifice Synergy, hard to make all of it fit. I mean, I think that's just current Yawgmoth, like they play three Cauldrons. <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm not sure exactly what that might look like. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what that might look like. Isn't Coco kind of clunky with cutting creatures? We still, you just have to make sure you have enough Coco hits. This is like a little low. We have 27. You could cut one. Card's still pretty good in the matchup, though, I think. Yeah, Turok is pro-white. It's like 2-1 two, two, pro-white's not that important, though. They have a lot of ways to get past it, especially with 
Sanctifier's coming in post-board, right? Coco also pitches to force, and gotta be mindful of our green card count. Lucy? <laughs> Lucy sometimes just opens the door and then leaves. Should you be playing one or two Fulminant Mage on our side? I think that a lot of lists are at the moment. Um, they, they should definitely have some number of them in the sideboard, I think, as far as, like, it first copy the main, it's it's kind of kind of tough, I'm not sure. Oh, it's Athena. Athena, you want to come here? Poor Athena, it's raining outside. Tur yeah, Turok's the best against four color. You bring them in against blue-white control also. Dryad Arbor? Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't hate a Dryad Arbor here, to be honest, but I think it's probably better without. Could say that some Cocos with less Coco hits. Yeah, I mean, our deck is just, like, so built around it. I mean, it's maybe even better to, like, be l lower on Unearth. Than Coco. Dude, no lands. Who has oh, so many no land openers lately? Okay, I like this one though. We do kind of need to draw a land um, soon. We could, you know, be haywire mining every turn. Oh, very nice that Gris keeps the graveyard full for your cauldrons. Thanks, Jeff, for the 29. Hope you're doing well today. There's our land, cauldron. Got a dodgy mana tithe. Can't really see Lucy. She is here, though. <laughs> no cam today. Opponent, really, really in the tank on this Agatha Soul cauldron. Please, opponent. <laughs> Sacking a fetch for Arbor, then Cauldron Fulminator can turn a fetch into a Wasteland. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can also draw a Dryad Arbor and cast it and lose the game, or play it and lose the game. <laughs> I get it. All right, so Agatha Soul Cauldron resolves. Now I'm going to try to attack for one. One damage through... Your turn, opponent. Can you do it the four months? Opponent takes a little bit on the instep, on taps. Plays a basic planes. Thinking, 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 thinking. Paying costs, paying costs. March of Otherworldly Light. Well, they actually were thinking about something. <laughs> Main phase, baby. For, not sure why. So build over a Stitcher Supplier. It's good to have something uh, to exile to pick counter on this. Trick the uh, ball rolling a little bit. Uh oh. Well, I guess I could do this in response. I need to find a. Um, Priest to get rid of that. We can't mill over a priest since it'll get exiled. Taps for a green, untaps, plays a cigar aid. Oh boy. So we can mill over our second haywire mite here. Not very likely, but um Okay, we mill over another supplier to Bowmaster. Asimek. Basura, 32 months. Thank you, thank you. Welcome back. Inkboth Nexus. Well, I guess I can maybe hope that they try to kill me with Inkboth next turn. I go for it with Bowmaster. Dice Factory today? <laughs> I wasn't planning on it. I've been kind of missing the deck, but I uh, don't necessarily have. Like I, I, I'm, I'm at the point where I don't think Beseech is a good card in the deck, so... Uh, usually don't like to play decks just to play it. Yeah, tank, 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 tank. Double hammer. <laughs> Attacking Grist? Interesting. Too bad we can't Cauldron the Grist.
Okay, so... I think I'll be killing that. Second Sanctifier means... I, I don't even know if we, if we draw Priest this turn. Can we even raise? I don't even think so. No, we don't. Well, I guess we can... Can we Coco into, like, Priest... Haywire Might? I guess that... But then we have to block with the Might, but then we can Cauldron it. Okay, so that's... A plan, I guess. Isn't Grist a creature in the graveyard? Yeah, but Grist is not in the graveyard. Grist is exiled because of Sanctifier. Lucy, Athena, who's crying? It says Esther's door is closed. Come here! Can you open your door for Athena? It is open. I don't know why she's crying. Can you? I think she wants you. The big baby. Well, I guess I can go, like, draw Mana Dork. <laughs> I can draw Mana Dork. Chump Block. Okay. <laughs> We've got a plan. Draw Mana Dork. Uh, chump Block. Then. Uh, <laughs> the next turn I can... I can cast Coco, because these will all be Mana Dorks too. And then I have to Coco into... Um, Priest plus a mana dork, and then I have to draw a mana dork every turn to continue to chimp block this. Or I could just draw, uh, like, Haywire Might. Although, they could just start attacking for two. Stats seem to suggest Hammer is better than people think in current meta opinions. Where are the stats? <laughs> I don't know. Like, Hammer is kind of good against Scam, and it is really bad against Beans, and, um, that's kind of the format. No Cauldron, Activision should turn into I, prob I probably should have. <sighs> well, it really needs a second land. Maybe two turns to draw it, but also if by Halfling dies, I think I'm going to go to five. It's close. <sighs> hmm... Go to five. I think they're better fives. This is not a better five. I have 19 lands. Is that like so low? <sighs> Alright, mold a three, baby. <laughs> I'm just gonna cons well, I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna mold a three. I'm not gonna play um any cards, I'm just gonna see what the matchup is. 19 lands is kinda low. Not this fucking low, dude. <laughs> the, the odds of, like, not having a land, a hand with more than one land in it. Okay, hammer again. Uh, oh, man, this is kinda like the matchup where just a priest can win. I'm gonna, I'm gonna concede, though. It's. <laughs> What are the odds of not having a hand with more than two lands until you mold the three? So that's four, five, six, seven. That's four hands. It's got to. It's got to be like incredibly. Like I, I'd say less than three percent. Probably. Probably even less than that. Okay, I'm actually gonna go off of the unearth. I'm gonna be. I think can keep in more fulminators than I had last time. So we'll go down to like three. We're also, you know, 19 lands, 5 mana dorks, 24 mana sources. Could be mono white Heliod, not hammer. Could be, um. Don't think we're gonna set that differently. I guess, you know, the, maybe the Fulminators are a lot worse. Another one lander. Do you prefer four cauldron scales? I think so, yeah. I like, I, I like main decking four cauldrons and, like, trimming, like, one against exile based removal. Are the fancy hats ever coming back? Uh, I don't know if any of them were fancy, but maybe they'll come back at some point. Hopefully my opponent leads on turn one Esper Sentinel again. Against what is good to Turox? Four color and blue-white control. You kept the six. You had fifty-six percent to draw a land in the top two. Yeah, but I mean, there's even a lot of matchups that's just not good enough. We have plenty of fives. I think that are better on average. 
Do you feel like there's tension between Cauldron Unear and Unearth? Well, like a little bit, but you just like can play the game and <laughs> figure out what the better line is if you have all the resources. Typically, usually, usually like these aren't the these aren't tensions that I mind so much when you just have. Oh no! I do. I need to Cauldron my thing. Do I need to Unearth my thing? It's it's you usually like if it's Fulminator, you just Unearth it, sack it, then Cauldron it. Uh, it's something you can do. It's not really that big a deal, I think. My sure scales is good against four color. Um, it's a lot worse now that people have been starting to play like Curse Totem. I think if they have like a Curse Totem in their sideboard, it's a lot worse. Um, I I I haven't lost to it in a long time. I think that I think that the oh, that's such an awkward draw to play my Visage you. Ooh, okay. We'll we'll, ex we'll exchange that for two grists. That that trade, I guess. Hopefully can hit a Fulminator Mage. Be happy enough with a Priest. I go Priest Bowmaster. I think I go Priest Bloodgast so I can be sacking that to the to the Priest. I I I haven't lost to it in a long time. It's I think that a lot of like whenever I play scales against four color. The chat is like full of like spike. You have lethal here. Go for lethal. And my opponents have like four cards in their hand, three open mana, <laughs> and you know stuff like this has been a pretty common theme. I, I I'm not like saying that all of the Twitch chatters are just like going for going for lethal into open mana, but for the most part, like I found I found myself pretty comfortable just out grinding four color with scales, just like. You, you, you put yourself in a position where their removal just doesn't line up well against your creatures because you can, like, sack them for value, ping them, move your counters around, overwhelm their mana, overwhelm their removal spells, make a saga tokens. It's just, like, it's not that hard to outgrind them. You won't win all the time, but I I, I, I really don't mind playing the matchup. When four one scales, you two ring in sideboards. Yeah, the, the, I, I guess that's one thing, too, is, like, I play, like, some number of the one ring in the deck, which helps the, the four-color matchup a lot, usually. I've been seeing Curse Totem for a while, so bringing one or two Force of Vigor instead of always defaulting to Might. Yeah. It's so tough to, like, have to run into Curse Totem and Scales, but maybe, yeah, it's about the time, huh? Will Four Colors start playing Stony Silence? I don't know. So I, I think that, for the most part, they'd rather play Curse Totem than Stony Silence. Um, because it gets, it's good against Scales and Yogg. Um, although Stony Silence is good against Tron. And Tron is one of their harder matchups. Curse Totem is worse for us than Stony. Uh, I don't think that that's true. Stony Silence turns off like Spring Leaf Drum, Shadow Spear. Um, but like, like, like what, what does Stony Silence stop that Curse Totem doesn't? Uh, or you know, like, like what, like what extra stuff does Stony stop? Because Curse Totem stops all this, like Stony stops all the same stuff Curse Totem does, with a couple extra things. Did you play eggs recently? Uh, we played eggs yesterday. It was we got slaughtered. In the context of the deck we're playing now, oh, I see, I see. <laughs> okay. Oh, they needled my priest. Okay, well that sucks. Let me get in with my orc and my blood gas. I guess I should probably be attacking with the one ones also. Do people not realize Damping Matrix exists? I think some people probably don't. So yeah, Stony Slaps Cauldron, exactly. Okay, any reason to... Yeah, I guess it's better to cast this now, ping one of the Constructs, sack Bloodgast, kill the other Construct, or kill both Constructs, basically. This is maybe just a mopey, <laughs> mopey one power beatdown kind of game. Cauldron abilities aren't affected by needle. Um, yeah, or you have to be you have to name the card that has the counter on it. 
think the X deck has played ran poorly. You could have played differently some spots. We're gonna play on stream again. Maybe I I I agree that it was interesting and fun. Um. I agree that we ran poorly. We ran into some like some like particularly unlucky stuff, like main deck, like just like natural haywire might on the play, game one. Um, I don't I don't know that I'm gonna play it again. Like we got we got like like the the thing is like the deck is explosive. It's powerful, but it it folds really hard to graveyard hate, grief scam, counter magic, disenchants. Sometimes like it it just does kind of lose to interaction really really hard. And probably just makes it not that good of a deck. Um, I'll keep this. This is definitely good against some hands that Hammer has, but also definitely not good against all of them. But this is kind of what we came here to do today. Hmm. It'd be a little bit weird if we feel like we need to force and we're not playing our Hierarch turn one. Hopefully just draw a different green card. Yeah, I, 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 I can't cast the Hierarch, so I'm going to cast the Haywire Might. Weird, weird stuff today, today, I feel. Double Hammer. Trompus, Twitch Prime, thank, thank you. Welcome back. We also only have three Fulminators in <laughs> post board. You all three of them. It's a weird day. They have, like, March here. Stone Forge. Don't put the main deck if you don't want to draw them. <laughs> Typically, like I like the the C philosophy. If you don't want to have two copies of a card in your opening hand, um, you should not have post board. You should not have four of them in your deck. So I that's, that's kind of like why I wanted to trim one. Having all three is like also kind of a <laughs> statistical outlier. Okay, what are we forcing? I think I just forced the Cigar to Zade and the Hammer. Drop us with the Twitch Prime. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> the statistical certainty. It worth to force the Thopter and aid versus hammer since then you have the might. The thing is like Pierce of Paladin becomes like a bit of a headache going forward. Um and like the 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 like it's nice that I could just save the might for the next hammer instead of like having to use it on this one if they have another hammer. Does that make sense? It doesn't seem like they necessarily have one. But I'm not really sure why they would not just get in for 10 this turn because they didn't get they did get in for turn the turn before obviously fulminator is looking kind of dumb against double basic planes but my opponent does have a lot of non basics in the deck and it's nice that we just kind of get to preemptively stop any urza sagas or ink moth nexuses from threatening us yeah that's a good a good heuristic like, we just don't have a lot of spot removal for paladin we still have like grists and we have priests and stuff, but I I, I agree. Um, without without like fatal push and stuff, killing the hammer seems a lot more important. Okay, two pretty dopey draws, but at least we have two power creatures to be getting in with. <laughs> Just playing a, this is not even a game of limited. This is <laughs> no, this is definitely a game of constructed. A lot of a lot of a lot of modern games look like this when someone draws a card like Force of Vigor and have to keep like a bad hand. It's like a bad hand, but I got two sideboard cards. You got sideboard carded, so your deck doesn't do anything. Just very very iconic uh, modern game. If you eat Grist with Cauldron as a creature, you get Planeswalker abilities. Yes, yes it does. Okay, so they can smack me for ten. Imagine my opponent somehow just has two hammers in their hand. <laughs> Be pretty brutal. Okay, 
Found a seven. Have the haywire might for the hammer. Um, I need to think about playing around protection effects. So I, I guess the best way to do that might be block with the might and then sack. <laughs> okay, they've they've seen the double block. Good play. Save the overgrown tomb for blood gas, I guess. So blood gas could block ginger brood <laughs> if if it could block in the first place. I'm just going to do this now, I think. Pretty clear they don't have a um, Surge of Salvation. I'm going to take one, and so the ra if we draw another Distant Chance, we win pretty easily. Um, but the race is now going to be do our mediocre or outright shitty beatdowns <laughs> uh, race my opponent drawing another hammer. What's nice about this Delighted Halfling is if it deals damage, any of my two power creatures are lethal, so it has like a reasonable attack next turn. <laughs> okay, so now they have a 2-2 two -two to block my 2-2s, two which is pretty good. Pretty good play for them. <laughs> Their 2-2 two -two also costs 2 mana instead of 3 mana for me. I've drawn a Guild Gate. Lovely. You may want to play lands you can Coco I activate Might in the same turn. I think it's... Dude, man, if I Coco into Might, <laughs> I'm pretty freaking happy after all this. I don't have a lot of resources. I feel like being able to bring back a Bloodgast is, is pretty relevant. I, I, I'll play one of these lands, but... Worse against Calder if I kill this, but like, I think stopping the ginger brew from gaining life is kind of nice. Did I discuss hammer time with Watsi when helping them with all the equipment in Lord of the Rings? <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah, Forge Anew. Um, when we were talking about Forge Anew, uh, it was kind of interesting, like, thinking about would uh, hammer players cut. Luris from their deck so they could play Cauldra and so they could play Forge Anew. Um, but Luris was, you know, banned like long before Lord of the Rings came out. Alright, we drew a spell. It's been like one of the most anemic games I've ever played, but it does look like I'm likely to come out ahead. A smoke, 43 months. Okay, thank you. Welcome back. Yeah, I just have to go 43 and 0 today. Already kind of behind on that record. <laughs> Okay. So you got no creatures left. I'm going to play the Overgrown Tube now because of Sanctifier. We beat any one blocker. One of the one of the lowest power level games of modern I've ever played. I just cast double disenchant, disenchant. Gray ogre, gray ogre, gray ogre. <laughs> What was their last card? It could be a lot of things. They could be sandbagging a land. They could have a third spring leaf drum. Second cigar to Zade. Well, they had Stoneforge Mystic, so it wasn't Cauldra. I don't know. Okay. Two kind of boring matches, but hopefully we uh, can get to do our thing and match three. <laughs> yeah, it was definitely not a Cauldra. Opponents are not going to really put you on. We can turn to Fulminator here if we mill over Fulminator with Supplier. Milling over Fulminator or Grist would be pretty exciting. And then, so yeah, it's like the, the nut draw here is going to be Halfling Lives, Supplier, Mill over, Grist and Fulminator and, uh, <laughs> and Bloodgast. And then we, when we play Cauldron and can sack it. 
<laughs> okay, it is, it is nice that we get to resolve our cauldron. Presumably. We get to start fighting their graveyard. Potentially. The creativity just isn't good at the meta anymore. Underplayed since it hasn't gotten any new cards. Um, creativity's fine. You can you can definitely play the deck and have a winning record with it, just like a lot of non-scam, non-bean decks in modern. There's there's certainly like I think a phenomenon where and, and so, someone in chat said this and it made a lot of sense to me that they think that the players who were playing creativity have switched to the Beanstalk four-color deck. Um, and that they, they've, they've made a, um, a pivot over there. And I, I think that that makes sense, I think. To some, so sometimes I think it's easy to overestimate the size of the modern player pool. You know, we, we kind of think that the game is... Well, I guess I'm casting Grist. We end up feeling like the game is bigger than it is, but there's not that many players who play modern. And sometimes, sometimes I, I I do think you have these kind of phenomenons where a big chunk of a player player a, a deck base like pivots to a different strategy. Um, not not that we have like any evidence to support that theory, but it is a theory that kind of makes sense to me. I played creativity now. I play being I'm sad about it. And see, we, 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 I think we've, we've heard a lot of anecdotal stories about this too. Two friends who build creativity playing four color, but hate it because it's too slow. Yeah. So we'll see. Yeah, and, and then, like, I, like one, one big dynamic that changed here is, like, creativity used to be, like, really good against four color. But the one ring, I think, really shifted that dynamic in a big way. Um, that now four color has, like, a super impactful four mana play to tap out four. Um, it's, like, a, you know, a lot better than Omnath in the matchup was. And I, I'll say this. Pe people who like to play four color, they just hate to lose any kind of grindy game uh that maybe that maybe that's also how creativity players were they just don't want to lose the grindy games four color bean players don't want to lose the grindy games and uh they they won't lose too many of them okay so i'm going to cauldron my halfling here played creativity now four color living but, but i hate it that, 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 this is kind of funny all the four, all the players who say they play four color are saying that they hate it. <laughs> you know, I guess either die a hero or uh, live long enough to start playing creativity. My opponent has two mana up here. I wonder what it is that they might be representing with this two mana. I've built over a grist, so I'm I'm gonna just start having a a damn good time. I think. <laughs> Let's go. I'm gonna kill the channeler, I think. It's really a super okay that Grist is dying. We just have <laughs> infinite Grists. I cannot remember the last time I cast a Bowmaster against Murktide and it didn't get Spell Snared. <laughs> I should have let the Channeler die. I, sorry, that was you know, just also a mistake, but... <laughs> it just always gets Spell Snared. I kind of think they just can't beat this, though. Like, I guess I, guess I don't have enough... Um, I don't have enough loyalty to sack anything to Grist this turn, so they can hit me for like eight, but. Seems gonna, like it'll be tough for them. We could also maybe mill over a Fulminator Mage here if we're lucky. Or Coco into one, I guess. Um, yeah, let's, let's play around Spell Pierce since we have the, the Halflings here. Oh wait, this has oh th I, this milled over an extra grist. I I totally missed that. 
actually kind of a big pun time. We'll, we'll take eight. We'll take eight. We have a Helia company. I mean, company's fine. It's it's it not not a deck I feel you know, passionate about, but. Um, I, I, I strongly recommend not playing Company in your Helia deck. I, I, I just can't stress how much better I think the deck is without without playing Company. Um, and, like, the stupid, like, we're putting... I don't, like, don't put Company, Spike Feeder... Like, like you just have to play so many weak cards in those builds. I, I really, really like the, um... The, like, the Le Leyland Binding Solitude uh, build we've been playing. Alright, they send me a message, hit me for eight... Okay, so I'm gonna bring in Endurance over Fulminator Mage in this matchup, and mostly just click it back after that. Yeah, yeah. I have a, I have an updated version of that Helia deck actually that um, we may be playing on stream today. It it does have like a pretty interesting update. I'm gonna kind of wait to say what it is, but it's maybe maybe not that uh, that unpredictable if you've been watching closely this week. Did we forget to uptick the insect? I, I thought I upticked the insect. Pretty sure I did. Yeah, not Lotus Field, that's a good guess. <laughs> the One Ring was in the deck. Yeah, I, I did get a Machaeus in there. I'm still... It's been, like, pretty whatever when I've been testing it. But it is... The Machaeus is a little bit better with the other card that we added. A little bit. Is the creature card high enough for Coco to spite? Yeah, we have 29 creatures. That's enough. Yeah, I just have one Achaeus in the Helia deck, but I don't know. It it, it does have some synergy with the other card uh, I added. It's <laughs> I don't know. I, you'll, you'll see. It'll be kind of obvious I think when you see it. Okay, well, I'm definitely keeping this on the Jog and Smirk Tide, but it's on a seven card hand. Yeah, I, I agree that Lotless Troll is a good Cauldron card. We had these... I had a Zombie Brew um, that I kind of slotted Lotless Troll into, and I'm kind of unsure on, like, what some of the slots there. And then... Um, I had a different... I had a different... Uh, I had a different Lotless Troll Brew that I'm still kind of working on. It's a little bit weird. Yeah, I don't. If you notice, it's a lot better with Tyvar and Asmo. It's it's I think significantly work at worse in this build. I don't think you want to play it. Is there a Cauldron Vengevine deck? New that was that was the Latrol deck. So like. It was kind of cool. You, I have like Carrion Feeder in there, Carrion Feeder, Ballista, Lot Troll. The thing is, like, there's not that many abilities to give. Like, you give Ballista's ability, you can give Asmo's ability, but Asmo's not that good in the, in the deck. It's not even something I'm sure I want to keep playing in the shell. Um, I was still playing Ledger Shredder, also. Like, Ledger Shredder gets a lot of counters. I'm working on it though. Okay, so Unholy Heats. Ban, 13 months, welcome back. Thank you, thank you. Certainly really wanting to draw land here. I don't know, today's been, I, today's been one of these days. I feel like I, I just take my turn, like, in two seconds. My opponents, <laughs> they have all the turns, all the decisions on their turns. I guess last game was kind of cool. I'm just trying to fill time. Oh, wait, can I just go... Exile the channeler, put a counter on the halfling. I, I did it! I made a decision! I made a play! In a game of Magic the Gathering. Let's freaking go, dude. My opponent says foolish of me. Hmm. Couldn't agree more, opponent. <laughs> Could not agree more. Now I can hopefully just draw land and slam the Coco. Another Coco. Hmm. 
Okay, that's back. We can save our priest from a unholy heat with evoking endurance. And we can save our halfling from a bolt with the same play. Don't want to show them that we have access to a creature yet, though. Should play Rise of the Witch King with Archon and Lotloth Troll. What the fuck is Rise of the Witch King? <laughs> Lich King. Each player sacrifices a creature. I mean, this isn't just worse victimize. Is victimize modern legal? <laughs> I don't think it is, actually. It's just like last breath. Yeah, Soul, Soul Diviner Cauldron does sound kind of fun. It sounds really slow, though. You do eat them? Yeah, but it's, it's four mana instead of five. It's like a really big difference, right? <laughs> Okay, they pitch a Blood Moon here. One damage, three damage. It's kind of funny just how, like, tap put a counter on a creature is, like, such a headache for these red decks. Hold on, this kind of... There, here's, I think, our first, like, tension with, uh... Cauldron and Unearth. It's okay, we can maybe cycle the unearths. Victimizer requires you have two creatures in your yard? Oh, right, I, I thought Victimizer was just sack a creature, return a creature. Alright. Th is it the third removal spell that kills the delighted halfling? That's necromancy? No, necromancy, you don't have to sack a thing. It's a recurring nightmare, I guess. Okay, um... We get to draw, like, a ha another halfling or supplier. Perfect. Also pretty perfect. Print this necromancer, you sack green mate the same archon like five times. Well, if it had if it didn't need if it had haste or something, it'd be kind of interesting, right? We also have priest of fell raids. It's like a much better kind of that effect. Okay, so nold over in endurance. I'm one mana short of casting. Coco. I think we'll just unearth and stop a merc tide from coming down. We consider the combo with the blue white, blue white untap effect exile card from the library and cauldron. Please, please oh, come on, the blue white untap effect. What? Oh no, you're talking about pure type mirror. You got, you got to type the name of the card though. The blue white untap effect exile card from library. Yeah, I, I don't think pure pure type mirror just is like a card that kind of sucks. Um, although I, I've been thinking about it more, and what's kind of interesting about like these ca cauldron combos is like. When you consider something like Devoted Druid, a lot of the times you're giving, um, a lot of times you're giving, how, how should I put this? You're, it's like if you give Devoted Druid, or sorry, Vizier of Remedies, Devoted Druid is abil Devoted Druid's ability, then you get infinite mana. But a lot, a lot of times that's how these combos work, where one half of the, one half of the cards is going to give you the combo, and then the other half is, um... Like just a creature without an activated ability, and what is nice about Peely Pala Pure State Miro is that you can give either you can give either creature the activated ability, and then you get to exile your library. Uh, the problem, right, is that's kind of all the combo does is exile your library. So you have to like do it until you find a Thassa's Oracle, and then like pass if you don't have a cycler, or like it's like it doesn't like actually win the game by itself is the problem. But I, I, what I do like about Pure State Miro Pilly Pala is that you can, you know, get it half, right? That, that is, uh, you can also get, um, you can combo, uh, you know, Pilly Pala with Paradise Mantle, which is, like, okay. 
Shouldn't we have exiled Halfling so we could cast Coco? No, because the cauldron was being explosives. <laughs> was not. It's better to leave the Halfling so we can cauldron it later. Luxier doesn't work with Devoted Druid. Uh, Luxier does work with Devoted Druid. It's. I, I, we ha we ha we've done that on the stream a few times, even. Yeah, you, get, you get infinite mana, not infinite power. Wait, they're bolting the insect token? Okay, and then they, so they get on holy heat, sure. Okay, let's go. Alright. Opponent finally gets the value out of their spell pierce. Really nice of me. Oh, wow. Um. Take Bloodgast Priest. Seems fine. Well, I guess also has haste tears, so now they're on a nice two turn clock. Druid's ability on something else, I didn't clarify with cauldron. Um why, wait, why, why would that not work? Druid's ability on something else with cauldron for Luxior? Because you still have all the same abilities. Tap make a mana, put a minus one counter, untap. I don't I don't I don't actually I see I actually have no idea why that wouldn't work. Do you think Dawn of a New Age is good or bad? There are no good or bad cards. There are just some cards that are different from others. <laughs> okay. They're alive. Guess I maybe could have cast that pre-combat. Okay, we win. Alright, after a pretty tough match one, bouncing back, 2-1. Rise of the Witch King might be useful for blind. I guess not the blind, they're playing Gigantha. Okay, I'm gonna keep this. I'm gonna put back second halfling. Maybe that deck is a Coco on the scale of Aether Val the Coco. Yeah, I still don't know what you mean by that exactly. Maybe it's because the curve is so low, you get your hand empty anyway with Vile. I think that's a, that's a good way to put it, yeah. Good way to articulate it. Oh boy. Oh, so we're up against Timeless Lotus, and we have double, double Fulminator. The vibes are painful and unpleasant. Hmm. Never try Cauldron plus Wall of Blood for a Hatred effect. Well, I mean... Uh, yeah, that sounds awesome, actually. That doesn't sound very powerful, but... Speaking of painful and unpleasant. <laughs> I think we just leave the activation up here. We don't need to do anything yet. This is definitely the matchup where you play you play the full banana deck and you just you just end up feast oh no opponent. <laughs> they conceded before I could even do it. Maybe they're just conceding by playing it. We get to we get <laughs> Man, Vulbanir is pretty good when it blows up three lands. I'll tell you that. When it's three mana, destroy three lands. That's pretty good. MTG name with the 16 ones. Thank you, thank you. Welcome back. Well, yeah, you, we just get to feast <laughs> in this matchup. This is what you do. You build a deck. You build a deck that has a really bad time against land destruction. You stream the deck. The next day, you play the Fulminator Mage deck, and that's how you... Then that's how you keep the content engine rolling. Uh, we're getting a lot of non-creature spells here. But I also want to be able, digging for Fulminator Mage with Coco. Maybe we trim, like, two... How many creatures is this? 24? 25? It's a little too low. Maybe we'll just play Turok over Coco here. Seems okay. Turok's pretty good against them. They're 100% on beans. You want Bowmaster? Um, yeah, I mean, I have the Bowmaster. I would think that they're on beans, but if they're not, they're, they're either on beans or rings, so I think you want both. I didn't cut them, did I? I did cut them. Oh. I guess we did, didn't want them, though. It'd be fine, I think, without them. He might be a little slow here. I'm a little under the weather today. I don't know how obvious it is. I'm all sniffly. Got, uh... 
Yeah, it could be a little slow. But Man Mana Dork would be pretty nice. Got uh, allergy medicine all in my brain. <laughs> what happened with the Blue Cauldron deck? You, did you stream it again since those two consecutive days we played it? We played it, yeah, we did one more stream. I'm gonna be playing it in the challenge this weekend. Deck's been really good. Um, I think there's, so like, I wanna play it in the challenge this weekend, but I don't know what build, so I think there's a chance tomorrow. They get a third, second amulet, the third off of this. Um, there's a chance that tomorrow I end up, I end up, um, playing all three builds we've played or or may, maybe maybe not all three since I, I really don't think that the urza build is the best one but I end, up, I end up playing a few different builds and um figuring out which which deck we're playing in the challenge on saturday i think that that could be fun yeah but the blue cauldron deck has been really really good is kindred plus cauldron not good enough there's so many abilities to choose from the thing the thing is like there are a ton of like five plus mana creature cards that you that are good with cauldron. Kiki Jiki is like kind of the biggest one that comes to mind. Kiki Jiki, Gristlebrand, Boba Rigmos and Rage. There's 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 a lot of um there are a lot of uh cards you can play, right? But like actually what's the word I'm looking for? But like get, getting getting these cards in the graveyard, that's the problem. Get, getting your um five drop in the graveyard like how are you doing that you're going to be looting it away uh, there are some decks that can like loot away these cards super easily but like should you just be a reanimator deck if your goal is to like put a big creature in the graveyard and then use a two mana spell to get that ability like you just just play gorio's gristlebrand cauldron which I, I also want to work on that deck again um i think i think that um since we worked on it the first time i think i've learned a lot about cauldron decks if that makes sense What targets are there in goblins? Goblins has a lot of cool tools. The problem is like the, the there's goblins is the kind of cauldron deck that I think really wants to have a lot of counters on their stuff, and you just don't. Like kind of the only way to get counters on your stuff in goblins is Grim Gully. Okay, we are super dead here. They can go a spin a thousand times. Do I really want these bowmasters? I actually don't know that they're that good. The Gris, they're, they're maybe a bit better than Gris, though. Remember what Spike was saying? Cauldron was a good... Yeah, it's... I don't know. It's like... This is always the life cycle of me, like, not being super high on a card. Spoiler season. I'm like, oh, I don't know. We'll give it a go. We'll try it out. I, I'm not sure. It's hard to evaluate. It's probably not that good. You need all this stuff going. And then the answer just gets shorter and shorter and shorter. And like more people get hyped on it, and I'm not as hyped on it. I just start. <laughs> it's that. It's terrible. I don't. I don't know if I ever said that about Cauldron exactly, but it's it's so hard to like say like that full. The full uh, breakdown every single time. Okay, so build over a Fulminator and a Force. Nothing too relevant, I guess. Been curious about abs and ascendancy and culture decks. You're making lots of bodies. Yeah, there's a lot of like kind of half cooked ideas that are like, hmm, if I, I, you know, I'm gonna have lots of creatures in play, and then this card will be good. But having lots of creatures in play in modern is like uh, much easier said than done. Whoa, they're playing Lotus Field. Interesting. It'd be crazy to die on turn two after we land, after we break the ice them. Smart with the 25, thank you, thank you. Amulet Grazer. Yeah, yeah we, we, it, it's possible. They have to draw, they have to run super hot though. They put a Gardens into their hand, but um, they've already played their lands, so they can only copy it if they have a Grazer. Huh. But they go for Gruel Turf instead of Gardens Copy, which is interesting. So there's Gardens, four mystery cards. Explore. No way we die. It's possible for us to die. It doesn't seem like... They, they would have, have to have had another amulet in hand, plus, like, pretty perfects, but... Amulet's a pretty dang good card. I think I should be miting an amulet here. 
just going from zero lands, it's such a such a difficult thing to like get anything going with just one amulet in play for them. And then we also have the uh, the besage you to kill kill this last one. My system of Amulet Lotus deck is it's just Legacy Storm with worse Mind's Desire. Man, Mind's Desire in that deck would be awesome. Um, I don't know, I don't play enough Legacy these days maybe to answer that question. You don't like Mage Sack if they play a land in response? The problem is if they play Lotus Field, Lotus Field has Hexproof. Um, and also, like I don't know, I, I built their deck and I it, you just like have to target the Amulets and they have a hard time with it. Like, there's just not much they can do with zero lands, one amulet in play that I can be too scared of. Yeah, Legacy Streams would be fun. It's just it's just very difficult to, like, be actively engaged in two formats at the same time for me. Um, not that I'm not open to it. I can die one damage at a time, huh? We've destroyed three lands this game. It's not nearly enough. It's not a lot of pressure. But it, it will be tough for my opponent to rebuild. Okay, can break the ice that. Um, I'll break the ice to this. I, I'm a little bit worried about, um, I guess one construct's not going to be too scary. But Turok will be a real clock, which would be nice. Plus, also him. <laughs> Hit explore. I think I'm besaging this. We'll have to sage you up now that you're the land and have a legendary creature. It <laughs> says this doesn't seem like the ideal matchup. I, I agree with that. They scored a Golos and a Timeless Lotus. So if I besage you the amulet, I get I get them up to five mana, which may unlock like a Golos or Timeless Lotus. I think I'll just wait on the besage you. It would be a funny game to lose. Obviously, I, it took me a while to get a meaningful clock into play. Ah, so you. May, may draw a cauldron and want to besage you the, the needle. Oh, what do they have? Oh, Giganta. <laughs> of course. It'd be funny to lose to Giganta here. <laughs> it's the fifth land destruction spell that really gets you when you play Timeless Lotus. So I can just hold up, you know, whatever I want to do with Cauldron at instant speed. There's a good chance they just concede here. I don't need to do anything really. But I can uh, I can kill the needle and then Cauldron something at instant speed. <laughs> the saddest of Boreal Grazer. I guess they're just dead to the um, the counter on the Cauldron too, huh? Oh, whoops. I I did miss with the besage you. I'm, I I meant to target the needle. I just manual dexterity fail. <laughs> they also still can't win for whatever that's worth. 
Oh, I could have spawned Golos. Oh, that would have been awesome. I just, I just missed the needle. I just, you know, have bad aim. Any chance you play MIG plus module synergy? The problem is, glass, like, Metallic Mimic is a really bad card. And it's like... Culture is just so good with so many good cards. Like, there's, there, there's, there's some lower card quality things you can play. But usually, like, the lower card quality stuff is, like, Stitcher Supplier, Ornithopter, cards that, like, are really cheap. And are good to Cauldron on to. It's, it's not usually like the two mana low card, card quality cards that you can play with Cauldron. Let's probably type in on a message here. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I thought, thought they got rid of dexterity cards. In paper you don't have that issue. You can verbally announce it. Okay, well we had like a... That first match was like real big demoralizer, but... We're 3-1. The four one prediction going for a minute. Yeah, the, the, it comboed with um, the swarm card, the sprout swarm. Oh, it was so cool. Okay, so spins are crashing for falls. Rhinos is probably going to be a tough matchup. So five up prowess with that mutagen growth feels wrong. I don't get it. I I would never play less than four mutagenic growth in any prowess deck. I think. Um, to to me, it's madness not to just play four forever. Skewed swarm? No, uh, sprout swarm. It's like yeah, sprout swarm. It's um basically a five mana convoke spell that puts a one one token into play. So if it was intruder alarm, sprout swarm, five creatures gives you infinite infinite tokens. <laughs> And we did that a little while ago. It was okay. Like, we, like, 3 2 a couple leagues. It wasn't anything to, like, write home about. But it was very fun. Coupe de Gras. I think it was the 10 months. Oh, there's a new intruder alarm art. Well, maybe we'll have to dust off the, uh, the combo. Could maybe have been better to, like, wait. To, like, not get Gris killed. But I'm actually kind of happy... So, like, for Gris to just soak up some damage here, and then we can start to try to control the game with Priest of the Forgotten Gods. Wasn't during the 3-2 Purgatory Week? Yeah, it might have been. Yeah, you can convoke the buyback. Yeah, Sprout Swarm is really good. It was, it was like, it, it was like, what, it was a common in the, in the set it was in, a Time Spiral or something. I think it was Time Spiral, but... It was, it was also, like, one of, if not just the best card in the set, despite it being a common. Like, you would pick it over almost anything. Should you wait on upkeep so they can't force? Yeah, I, I... They could dispute it, though, is the thing. So, yeah, no block with just the insect to keep Scrist alive, so we'll take four here. Future set, yeah, a little bit before my time. Don't really know the names of the sets back then. Fair enough. We have another Rhinos coming off Suspend next turn, which is bad news for me. We drawing a lot of Blooming Marshes on turn four today. I'm just gonna jam another Coco. A little late for the land destruction stuff. Let's go to game two. Then two more rhinos coming off suspend. Don't really see a path out of this. Yeah, rhinos maybe a little bit of a, a blind spot on our cyborg plan. I think I think we could try to fulminate or mage them off mana game one. Won't be like the most consistent plan, but it is a plan. Priest of the Forgotten Gods is how we can theoretically control the board, but I do think it, kind of a lot has to go right. Any interest in brewing standard decks? I mean, I don't have zero interest in, like, ever playing Standard again, but it's just, I, I think people can underestimate, like, how tough it is to successfully brew in a format. It is just, it's, it, it is incredibly time-consuming to know a format well enough to be able to innovate on it. It just, it takes, it takes so, so much of your time. And I, I've tried to be, like, be actively brewing and Pioneer and Modern at the same time, and it's 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 not it's not something that is very sustainable. I think. Man, this hand sucks. Cauldron and Gris with Metallic Mimic goes infinite. Yeah, there's a lot of three card Cauldron combos. Okay, this hand, I can work with. 
I'll put back the grist, I think, and then I think I'm going to bank on trying to draw land. Or uh, maybe get lucky and just mill over a fulminator. Like, like for me to brew in standard, it would be like, it would take me weeks to realistically get to the skill level or like to like the, the knowledge level of like understanding like what is happening in standard like what is the standard format look like at the moment and like and like come to a deep understanding of it and then it would take me more time to like get to a point where i'm able to to innovate on that formula and it would be like a lot of work for people being probably less interested in it than, than modern content <laughs> if let's be let's be real it's not that complex and standard. It is though. It, it, there's not any constructed format that would not take any any person like, like 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 if if I, I don't know anything about standard. I, I I watch a little bit of worlds and I don't really remember much about it. I don't know the di the dynamics of the format. It is not. It's it's not as complicated as modern, but it would it would take you know mo modern is just more complicated. So it would take you long like longer than weeks. It would take me like minimum two weeks to learn. What it is that's happening in Pioneer, I think, or Standard, I think. They ice my land, so I can't Fulminator Mage them here. I can Fulminator Mage them, actually, because I hit Priest of the Forgotten Gods. Let's go, dude. The best hit by like a million years here. Man, these kind of draws are so fun. Okay, subtlety, fair enough. Yeah, this is a mulligan to five. Let's keep the fulminator. Put on rhinos? Yep. Yeah. It's harder to brew in standard because there's not that many powerful cards in Jewish. Yeah, I, I I agree that that's true. Also, these like 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 in in some ways it's like modern is more complicated than standard and pioneer. But because those card pools are smaller, it formats become solved a lot a lot quicker. It's it's also like a little bit less about the formats the formats being smaller and also about the fact that there are like uh, design philosophies that are just not cooperative with like. Like, 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 to some extent in Pioneer and Standard, like, when you spend mana on a card, like, like, you kind of know what you're going to get. Like, you're, there's, there's no, like, ways to cheat on mana. There's no ways to, uh, play spells for zero mana. There's no, um, it's harder to, like, make weird infinite combos with, like, these big clunky expensive cards. They don't make a lot of cards that combo with stuff. So, that's, that's why for the most part Standard and Pioneer, or maybe more so Standard, is just, like, fair decks like mid-range control aggro like just regular formulaic decks that fit very well into an archetype and um and uh don't don't have like a lot of like weird complicatedness and and there's a reason why i play so many like weird and complicated decks on stream and, and that reason is because these kind of like obvious value piles these kind of like obvious like pile of good cards these 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 sort of builds get solved super fast okay so let's go cauldron exile fulminator mage plus my blood gas never really gets old cast hierarch cast fulminator mage Priest you. Yeah, I don't think we can kill them, but we can put them down to one land, and in a lot of ways that's better. Yeah, pre Priest goes really crazy in this deck. If only this was the first, uh, first match of the day.
<laughs> Opponent says, I can bear being priested three times in a turn, but I draw the line at Cauldron Fulminator Mage. And hey, that was a pretty good multi five, huh? Lethal on board. Well, I had to tap my blood gas to priest again, so I, I think I had to wait a turn. Yeah, this deck's pretty fun. Alright, let's. Well, I'd say it's very close, but. I think the matchup's maybe bad enough. We have to mulligan aggressively. Puts on a mold of six. This hand also kind of sucks. Did we have land drop? We, we played a land already. Well, our, our last mold of five was pretty good. Maybe this one would be good as well. Is there any reason to run Tyvar? So I so our first draft of Cauldron Fulminator Mage, which which we did pretty well with, um, was a Tyvar deck. Okay, here we go. Kind of the same hand. I almost want to just put back the Fulminator Mage. Yeah, it is going to be too slow to draw. We just have to mill over one. I'll draw a fetch so I'm not trying to shuffle that one back in. Lots of Jailer and Chalice on the sideboard for the matchup. It's just like it's just very hard to fight randos on that access, but. You could, you, I, I would probably play Jailer over it. I might play like Explosives instead. Milling over no creatures feels pretty rough here. Where you at with Scales after yesterday? Um, I'm starting to be convinced that it might be correct to play only one copy of the one mana Ozolith. It just doesn't, feel, like the format is so interactive at the moment. Like, you're just not trying to combo kill too many people with the one-man Ozlet. Oh no, I spilled my my tea. Hold on. I'll get a towel in a second, it's just like a tiny bit. Um, but but when and when you are trying to combo kill, it's like you still have access to Urza Saga to, to do that. Um, so I'm so I'm thinking that you maybe want to cut go down to one copy. I'm I am really liking four cauldrons in scales. Um, I, I I think it is just a 4x cauldron deck. At this point, uh, that means I kind of have one flex spot. I'm not sure what I'm doing with. I don't think I'm playing the third. I don't think I'm playing the third two mana Ozolith. I, yeah, I'm not super relevant mills again. Unfortunate. I guess if I draw a land, I can under supplier to like redraw. Um, try to think. I don't, I don't know if there's any. I, I I have like one slot in the deck that I'm not sure what I'm doing with, and that's the that's the slot. The first overseer, yeah, I think the first spell is kind of interesting. I would really like to not play another two drop though. Um, whatever the spot is, like I, the deck just has infinite twos. Spell is probably fine. Um, oh, we just had no creatures this game. High variance deck, I guess. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not very excited about the first Steel Overseer. Like, I would probably be more likely to play the first One Ring. Um, the first One Ring is probably something I'd play. It's like, it's like you can play Ring, Welding Jar, Steel Overseer, 23rd Land. Um, oh, I don't really like the 23rd Land that much. Uh, but if the 23rd Land is like a Blink of Both Nexus, it's kind of interesting. I would really like it to be like a one drop. Like I, I, I really do not like main decking welding jar. There's so much exile based removal. Um, but it can be a ring. I, I, I would not play ginger brood. I don't think ginger brood would be very good. Silver seer is like a three drop because it does something on turn three. I mean, it's like a bad two drop, is what you're saying. <laughs> Been like a one worker now better with cauldron. Yeah, I, I, I could get behind like one worker. I don't, I don't feel like that's bad. Okay, we're gonna need to find a priest. I think I'm, and priest requires you to sacrifice a lot of creatures. So I don't also I also don't feel like we can block with multiple things. Kind of have to high roll a little bit here. Our first nine mills found no creatures. There's a fulminator mage and a halfling. So if I cauldron the halfling, I can at least um, cast my coco for sure. Don't know that I can resolve Coco for sure. I, I would probably just play the first copy of the One Ring, but I, I, like the, the the format is so grindy at the moment. Yeah, the format is so grindy. Like, I think I think I think I just would be like playing playing the grindier version. I think we should prioritize the fetchable one drop. Yeah, but you have fucking Zabaz. Zabaz is almost better. Always better. 
Like Zabaz is better. Like when you also also like Zabaz is better than um, than worker. Even when you have another Zabaz in play, it's almost always better. I I I, I have a hard time imagining a situation where it's not. You can play it out here if they have like nothing, which is not likely but possible. Um, we kill a Rhino, untap Coco, find a Grist. Sir Ginger in the sideboard. I would never sideboard it in if it was in my sideboard. There's not a single matchup in Modern I would side it in. <laughs> I was going to say Workhorse a card. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Oh, a, a fetchable one shot. I was talking like a different card. Okay. Yeah, there, there's a lot of options. I'm, I'm chewing on it, but... I, I, I think I think the, the big... Like, I also, like, am happy enough just playing the second second one mana Ozolith, too. Like, that's not a... That's not a decision point that I think is bad. I think it's fine to just still play... Um, to still play two. Um, can't really beat anything, so not playing around anything. One Thrill Seeker. That card just seems so win more expensive and not an artifact. I, I will say this, though. Like, Scales players, like, they just, like, will do anything besides put the One Ring in the deck. They just hate the idea of buying a One Ring. And I get it. It's fine. But, like, they'll freaking put Car and Cyan of Urza in the deck before registering the One Ring, which is so funny. Alright, a little late. Priest of Fell Rights. <laughs> if you had been milled earlier, maybe we had a chance. Oh, I guess they had the answer for the, the Cauldron. Okay, um... We're gonna pivot to the backup deck here. <clears throat> I was teasing, teasing it for a little bit this week, but this is an updated version of the Mono White Helia deck. That we were doing pretty well with. Er <laughs> 